with a panel discussion on the topic, what is being done to promote tourism in CLMV countries. Our panelists are Mr. Pio Wei Yaza, Joint Secretary General, Tourism Board of Myanmar, Mr. Mason Florence, Board of Director from Pacific Asia Travel Association, Mr. Tassipon Balavelt, CEO from Asia Aviation Public Company Limited. The moderator is Kun Chatri Prao Prai Kun, who won SAA Awards for Analysts in 2012. Please welcome our distinguished panelists and our moderator. Hello and good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome all of you to our panel discussion today, focusing on what's being done to promote tourism in LVMC. Tourism has been one of the key sectors that contributed to Thailand's growth in the past and is expected to continue to remain an important driver of our economy in the coming years. With upcoming ASEAN economic community and recent opening of Myanmar, visitors now have more reasons to visit and revisit the region. Our panel today, consisting of experts from various segments of the tourism industry, will share with us their valuable insights into the opportunities and challenges facing Thailand and LVMC countries in developing the tourism sector. To begin, I would like to now turn the floor to Mr. Mason Florence from Pacific Asia Travel Association, who will start off our discussion with his insight into the growth trend and outlook of tourism into Thailand and LVMC. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to first thank the organizers for, for inviting me here today uh, on behalf of, of PATA uh, and also the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office uh, here in Bangkok where I work. Um, I'd like to just give you a very short overview of what's happening uh, in the greater Mekong subregion and in particular with the LVMC. We normally call this CLMV uh, amongst the governments to be alphabetical. Um, I, I, this is kind of the cooler branding with it's a bit sort of the Louis, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy uh, thing with the LVMC. So I'm um, anyway inspiring, but I'll go back and forth between LVMC and CLMV, but uh, it's all the same. Um, firstly, on the Pacific Asia Travel Association, if you are not familiar with the organization, 60-year um, uh, history already um, operating in 105 economies, 102 countries in 105 economies uh, globally. There are uh, 12 subregions within the, the PATA territory and uh, 17 different time zones. So it's an incredibly uh, large uh, piece of, of land. Uh, people think it's, it's really focused here just in, in the Asia Pacific, but it's, it's, it's basically global now. And the Mekong Tourism Office um, here is based in Bangkok. We are the secretariat for the tourism working group of the greater Mekong subregion, which are the six countries, of course, CLMV, plus Thailand and two provinces of China, uh, Guangxi and, and Yunnan province as well. We are based uh, at the Department of Tourism here uh, under the Ministry of Tourism and Sports, who, who graciously uh, give us office space. We're just across the street from the PATA offices, so very convenient. And uh, again, we're working with uh, all six countries to promote the GMS as a single destination um, with a very strong slant towards sustainable tourism development, responsible tourism promotion, and basically alleviating poverty, trying to help alleviate poverty using tourism as a tool. Just some very quick numbers, um, 2010 until 2012, in terms of the, the visitor arrivals, um, growth of nearly 40% in, in a three-year period. So we have been on a, a, a constant uh, trajectory. Um, in fact, going back decades, this cooperation between the six GMS countries um, goes back to 1992. Formally, um, a framework was set up, a GMS tourism, not only tourism, a GMS cooperation program framework um, instigated by the Asian Development Bank. Um, we had, uh, the, in the tourism sector, our office and the cooperation among the tourism stakeholders was set up, uh, again, also back to 1992. Um, later, in 2005, 2004, 2005, with support from UNSCAP and NADB, our, our office was formed. Um, so since then, it's been steadily going up. Um, and you can see by the numbers here, we, we crossed uh, 32 million in 2010, uh, nearly 38. Uh, in 2011 and have nearly come to the 44 to 45 million mark um, and soon to be crossing 50 million. So it's quite an incredible uh, growth pattern across the entire region. 
Um, this is a slide from um, Pata has a tool on their website called Empower, um, which is a very, very handy tool. You can plug in basically any country and any kind of data you're looking for in terms of tourism statistics. Um, this just gives you a, a snapshot of, of the growth as well. Um, the, the main uh, bars are the numbers. The growth rate is uh, indicated by the uh, thinner lines. Uh, you can see Myanmar on the top. Um, Mr. Peel will speak a bit more, I'm sure but uh, a, a, a massive uh, vertical trajectory at the moment. Vietnam, even with the growth rate, growth rate coming down a little bit, the numbers are still going up. Um, but again, if you go on to Pata Empower, you can search around and, and download uh, anything you need from there. Um, a quick look at the four countries um, in terms of their tourism assets, why people are going, why these trends are, are continuing to go up and up. Uh, in terms of Cambodia, obviously Angkor Wat has been the big draw, the number one attraction, and continues to be, but at the same time we're looking at diversification into seaside tourism down on the southern coastal corridor, Sihanoukville, Kampot, Kep, these areas are starting to boom and take off. There's actually a kind of three country link. Uh, you can make a, a trip from Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh City all along this uh, southern and coastal corridor. Some people are calling it Asia's Riviera, uh, which is nice for branding, of maybe a slight reach. Um, but uh, anyway, also uh, ecotourism, a lot of stuff happening in the Northeast on the Mekong Discovery Trail, etc. And a big boom in urban tourism. While Siem Rip and Angkor Wat has been the main uh, destination, Phnom Penh, as many of you know, is really starting to blossom and bloom. And there's, there's tons going on there. Favorable factors, very easy, uh, very, uh, easy visa processing, uh, and, and has been for many, many years. Um, you can just hop on a plane, show up, um, get in line. Hop on Air Asia, I'm told, actually, uh, entire Asia, so duly noted. And also full open skies policy, and we will hear more um, on air linkages from Mr. Tassaporn. Uh, in Laos, uh, Lao PDR, uh, basically nature and ecotourism are the big draws. They're a landlocked country, but um, full of nature, full of, of eco opportunities. Also, in terms of the diversification, the trends are moving toward a lot of heritage tourism. Of course, Luan Prabang, uh, Wat Po, Plain of Jars. There are um, several UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And the river tourism. Laos, is there, there, there are you know, 1,000 plus uh, kilometers of, of uh, Mekong River heading right down uh, between Thailand and Laos. Also, very easy uh, visa facilitation and has been for years and many, many new cross-border checkpoints opening up. And um, in fact, even with, with Myanmar, we're gonna hear more later on. I'm gonna be very quick on Myanmar because Mr. Pio is here. Um, in terms of a draw, it really is the last frontier. It, uh, you know, there's North Korea, there's Bangladesh, there are a few other unvisited destinations, but nothing with the color and the, the, the panache and the, and the pizzazz of Myanmar. And if you haven't been, please go soon. Um, Ecotourism opportunities, heritage, uh, Mandalay, Yangon, Bagan, Beach tourism, you have this incredible, um, you know, Andaman Sea coast, um, and the, uh, the Archipelago, Archipelago, fantastic opportunities. For future perspectives, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, there is a new tourism master plan, which is up on the slide uh, in the corner that Mr. Uh, Pio will tell us more about. Um, visas are getting easier, uh, growth in international air connections as well, uh, which we'll hear more about. Um, for Vietnam, a huge number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and these have really been the anchor for bringing people into the country. Also diversification opportunities with he more heritage tourism um, and seaside tourism. The coastal hotel and resort development uh, scene is booming in Vietnam. You went from having you know, virtually uh, nothing, say up to 10 years ago, and now the whole China Beach and the Kondao Islands are getting their Hyatts and their Hiltons and their Amans and their uh, other sort of five and, and six star resorts. And in terms of the, the, the air linkage also getting better, visas, while not quite as easy as um, in, in Cambodia and in Laos, uh, and even in Myanmar, it is definitely easing and uh, another favorable factor. And three basic sort of pillars in terms of favorable factors to growth across the entire region. Um, the air links improving, especially to secondary destinations. And again, Mr. Tassaporn, I think, will tell us more. Um, the hotel development, the capacities are improving. The international chains are expanding across the region. And um, finally, just in, in terms of general infrastructure, the roads are improving constantly. There are bridges and tunnels and, and uh, all kinds of uh, you know, hard infrastructure going in. So things are improving. 
for the future. Um, there's always talk of the single visa for, for ASEAN, for GMS. Um, this is not going to happen overnight, but it is getting a heck of a lot easier to move across these borders, and the facilitation of visas is getting easier and easier. Um, what this creates is the opportunity for multi-country circuits, um, which is what we're really promoting now, trying to get people to travel overland, trying to get them to spend more time, trying to get them to spend more money, and trying to get them to spread those benefits of the tourist dollar further afield, not just to the major tourist centers. So this is really the future. If you can imagine flying to you know, Paris and renting a car and driving all around Western Europe, this is going to be the future. Um, of course, you need to fly somewhere as well, um, but. Uh, but uh, you know, you fly in, fly out, but you can do a lot of overland travel. And very quickly, uh, as Thailand with a benchmark, and um, Thailand is going to continue to be the hub. Um, it still represents over 50% of the international arrivals into the region. Um, it's, it's the natural gateway. There are already 11 flight connections from Bangkok to CLMV destinations. And I think, as Tassa Pong will tell us, there will be more uh, coming in the future. And obviously, it's still the best infrastructure by far of any GMS country. And um, in terms of the tourism uh, enterprises and the ability to promote uh, Tourism Authority of Thailand, et cetera, have been doing a terrific job. So for sure, Thailand will remain uh, the hub and will continue to be the, the, the pass-through point um, as the rest of the region expands. Um, thank you very much for listening. My email is at the bottom. Um, I think we'll have some, some chance to have questions later, but you can contact me anytime. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Forens. Uh, next, Mr. Tosapon from Air Asia would share with us his view on how airlines can contribute by increasing accessibility into the region. Uh, thank you, and thank you for inviting me today. 80% um, of the uh, people who fly with um, a low cost, this is um, uh, a behavior around the world. 80% is for tourism. Only 20 percent, 15 to 20 percent is for business. So um, many of the people that come fly with us, um, 40 percent over on, the, on, on one plane is a first time flyer. So a lot of people that come to fly with us, they first time they would book on promotions, a promotional fare, and they are first time flyer. So they barely know nothing about flying. And, um, for the past 10 years that Asia has been in this region, I think we created the Asian uh, backpack uh, phenomenon. So you can see that there are a lot of backpack. We see a lot of, you know, if you go to Koh San World, you see a lot of backpack, you know, uh, people from Europe, from the US, or even from Japan. And you don't see any, anything like this for, for people in, in, in Thailand or in this region. But uh, for the past 10 years that we have been existed in this, in this, in this country and in this region, we see a lot of backpack going, a group of between four to eight uh, people, uh, students, where they, they can go off on the weekends to Vietnam, to Cambodia, or even to Singapore. Now we get a lot of booking from uh, kids, kindergarten. Normally they would go on the bus to the Dusit Su for their uh, excursions. But now they are flying to Chiang Mai to see the panda. Go in the morning and then they come back in the evening. So it's the same day. Okay, and for people who are in the, their uh, secondary school, uh, on, on high school, on the excursion, they have to go to see, most of the time, to Bang San to see the aquarium. But now, they go to Singapore to see, to visit the Sentosa and visit Ocean, you know. And on the same day, going in the morning and come back in the evening. So, the making travel affordable for, for people has changed a lot of, 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 of uh, travel. So even now, 10 years past, 20 to 30 percent of the people on the plane is still a first-time flyer. Okay, so that, that, that's one thing that we create opportunity for people to fly. The second is because 80 percent of the passengers are tourists. So every year between October till March, there are a lot of people who come from Europe, the U.S., um, uh, England, you know, to come to, to, to visit Thailand. Most of them, they would go down to the beach, Phuket or Krabi, Trang, whatever. And then they would travel around the Indochina region. And every year they would come. So what they need is new tourist attractions or new destinations every year. So that's why being an airline, you have to continue to explore which are the upcoming cities, which are the upcoming uh, attractions, so that we can uh, go and develop, talk to the airport, talk to the communities. Are you ready for for the tourists to come in 
and then we can strike a deal, and then we start flying. So you can never stop. So it's an ongoing task to create new places to go. For example, I think we are the first one to go into Mandalay in, in Myanmar. And I'm mean, not a very uh, cultural sensitive person, to be honest, but after that visit in Mandalay, it changed my life. Now I like to go to see the temple because you look at all the teak wood temple, which is hundred and hundred years ago in Mandalay. I urge all of you to go. It's really beautiful. And it's the first time that I took over 500 pictures of that trip because it's so beautiful and it's so nice. And I'm Thank sure you. that people who come from different parts of the world would, would, would love it as well. And there's a lot of things to see in, in Myanmar. Okay, and a lot of untapped um, destination in Cambodia, in, in Laos, and also in, 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 in Vietnam. So we have a team uh, dedicated, a marketing team in the company who actually only looking at um, Indochina region. So our marketing team has divided into four teams. One is China because it's so big. And then two is Indochina because it's really upcoming domestic market and anything else except Indochina and, and, and China, which is Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. So this team of Indochina has been set up for the past two years because we see the upcoming uh, tourists and it's really working very well. Our load factor to Mandalay is, since from day one until now, every day it's above 80% a load factor. On the weekend, going on Friday and coming back on Sunday is like 90% or 100%. Okay, so it's, it's a lot of things to see, and I urge you to, 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 to go there. By the way, it's worldwideweb.aisha.com. You can go and look at the promotion there. Okay? So I'll just go uh, briefly on, 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 on uh, the Louis Vuitton Moe region. Right? <laughs> okay. So it's 170 million people. Okay? So when Air Asia look at uh, ASEAN, I don't look at um, Thailand or, or whatever country. I look at 680 million people in ASEAN region. That's why we dare to, to order so many planes because we are not a Thai airline, we are not a Malaysian airline, we are not an Indonesian airline, we are an ASEAN airline. Okay? So we use that uh, philosophy to look into the Indochina region. So we, I'm not looking at Myanmar or Cambodia or Laos, I'm looking at 170 million people. And what uh, Mason has mentioned, Thailand is the hub. Everybody has to come here for education, for business, for banking, for hospital, for, for a lot of things. So we continue to be the hub. As long as we have and provide connectivity to this region, we continue to be the hub. Okay? Um, and the growth is phenomenal. It's about 29% a year uh, since for the past uh, many years. These are the connectivity of all the airlines. So uh, even though uh, I would like to conquer them all, but we welcome our friends there as well. Many airlines have been operate in, in many of the cities for over 10 years. Uh, from there were nothing until now, there's a, a lot of tourism going in those regions. So it's not difficult to go into Indochina uh, at the moment, unless it's a new city, but we are working on that. Um, for AirAsia itself, we have access to uh, Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. Uh, three, three daily flights to Ho Chi Minh. We used to have three daily flights to Hanoi. I am sure 80% of people in Hanoi and around there have visited Thailand already. Okay? So they now um, probably travel somewhere else, so we have reduced the frequency to one. Uh, we opened Mandalay, and now um, in October we are looking to open at um, Naypyidaw as well. We would love to open in many more cities, but we are waiting for the airport to be ready, and there are enough hotels to fill for tourists. At the moment, uh, I am sure that the hotels in Mandalay has been fulfilled already. Uh, please check the hotel availability if you want to go, because it's kind of fully booked, but I'm sure by year end or by first quarter of next year, there are a lot of hotels uh, coming up there. A lot of investment has gone in there because tourism has, has bring uh, prosperity to the, to the community. Cambodia, we are uh, having flight to Phnom Penh, and also in October, we are having a, a low-cost connectivity to Siem Reap as well. Okay. We localize a lot of our activities. The, the same promotion that you have seen in Thailand is also ex been uh, exploited down into all the regions, so we don't keep anything. Okay? When we launch any promotion, it goes into all 
the Indochina region simultaneously. So people who are in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in Laos, or in Myanmar can enjoy the same promotion that we have in Thailand. Okay? And we are localized in all the activities we have, uh, working with the local communities. We have a uh, sales office in many of the region there as well, and we translate everything uh, into all the different languages. And on our website, um, uh, we have in Vietnamese, we have in Cambodia, and now we are developing in, in uh, yeah. Burmese language, Myanmar. Okay? Um, it's a very fast-growing um, um, region. Our first half, our passenger has grown up by 75% of the first half comparing to last year. So it's a very promising region. So anything that you are uh, involved in tourism in this region, investment is, is ready uh, to go in there. Okay? Um, that's for the presentation. I just want to recap that we are looking at at least five or six more places to fly into, into, into uh, this region. We are looking at two, a few cities in Vietnam. We are looking at Sri Hanukville. We are looking at uh, Luang Prabang, Pak Se, and Sawanaket. And we are looking in Bagan. So all the cities that I have mentioned, you will see it become reality in, 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 in the next one to two years. What has stopped us from flying? It's very simple, infrastructure for aircraft. Infrastructure for aircraft is readiness of airport and readiness of the ground handling uh, facilities. And for the people who arrive there is the transportation, I mean ground transportation and also for the hotels. So if these four factors are ready, we are ready to go. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much to Mr. Tosapon. Last but not least, Mr. Pio from Tourism Board of Myanmar will tell us about the potential of Myanmar, Myanmar's tourism industry. Thank you. Let me use the podium. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers, SET, Patra Securities, and uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, for giving Myanmar a chance to present what it can offer to, to the potential investors. Um, Myanmar is, like uh, Kuntasapon and Mr. Mason Florence mentioned, a country, a tourist destination which has safety and security and uh, possessing diverse culture and natural heritage, archaeological findings, historical pagodas, and uh, we are very proud to be a Myanmar national. And uh, it's a land like Thailand, it's a land of the people with hospitality and uh, very kind hearts. Um, Myanmar is trying to engage the world over the last two years, and uh, the international community makes Myanmar as an emerging destination, not only for the tourism, but also for the business uh, investments. And uh, the, the tourist arrival, visitor arrival is in, uh, increasing very dramatically. As a result of these favorable conditions, Myanmar tourism begins to pick up a lot. These are the figures um, for the last four years. And uh, we are expecting this year at least uh, we will have at least 30% increase over the last year's figures. And the, the overall number of tourists arrived to Myanmar from January to, to, say, to May is showing that there is 32% increase compared to the last year's figures. And uh, the tourism receipts from Myanmar also has been increased by 67% from 319 US dollar uh, million in 2011 to 534 million in 2012. In terms of market trend, uh, Thailand stands in the top position, sharing 16% of the market share in Asia, followed by China, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore. And for the room capacity, up to now, Myanmar has uh, a a grand total of 29,844 rooms in 824 hotels, 
and uh, there are many malls coming up to be open in the, in the near future. Um, the destinations which are regularly visited by visitors are Yangon, Mandalay, Bagan, Inner Lake, and the uh, Napali and Wisang beaches, and emerging destinations in the Haley regions. And uh, also the Magui archipelago is starting to be open to as a potential uh, ground for the investors. And uh, I don't think I have to go into detail for the connectivity of the, the Myanmar to, to the rest of the world. Um, Mr. Tassapon has already mentioned about the air links and also Mr. Mason touched upon that, so I wouldn't go, like to go into details. Uh, but currently we have seven domestic airlines operating in Myanmar and uh, 23 international airlines flying to Yangon and Mandalay. And uh, in the next month, NOC Air is trying to uh, operate flights to directly to to Yangon and also to Molimyang, which is a, a emerging destination and close to the famous Golden Rock Chaitio Pagoda. And I would like to invite more visitors from Thailand to visit us using that, that opportunity to take the flight of Nok Air. And of course, Thai Air Asia is trying to increase the capacity load factor into Myanmar and uh, Next month, at the end of next month, the, they will directly fly to Nipido as well. And to develop, um, before I go on to the next, uh, I'd like to give you some shots of the tourist destinations, Yangon, Bagan, Mandalay, where the uh, Kuntasapon has placed an emphasis on the cultural and religious edifices and Amarapura, and serene and tranquil inner lake in the Shan Hills with the floating gardens and uh, floating market. And the famous Fauna O Pagoda is uh, one of the, the highlights on the inner lake. And uh, in November, there is a fire balloon festival in Taungji on the full moon day. I think it will coincide with the uh, Luai Kratong in Thailand and Kaku Pagoda Festival uh, sometime in March. Also, uh, it falls on the full moon day in March. And uh, ethnics, and the beaches, and the Magui Archipelago, close to Thailand's uh, Phuket and Ranong. And this is Macleod Island, where we have a resort called Myanmar Andaman Resort. Um, to develop the sustainable tourism in Myanmar, the Ministry of Hotels and Tourism has adopted the responsible tourism policy and community involvement in, in uh, tourist, tourism policy in collaboration with Myanmar Tourism Federation, where I work for voluntarily, and uh, with the assistance of Hans Seider Foundation from Germany and Norway, um, and, and uh, and uh, for the purpose of achieving economic growth, environmental sustainability, and social justice. Uh, next, the Ministry of Hotels and Tourism also made concerted efforts to draw Myanmar Tourism Master Plan, as shown here, uh, with the assistance of Asian Development Bank and uh, the, the, with the financial assistance of Norwegian government. Um, it comprises a long-term tourism strategy with short-term action plans, which are in line with the national development priority and harmonized with other tourism strategic plans of ASEAN and GMS, where Mr. Mason is at the helm of making things under control and implementing. The main purpose of the tourism master plan is to minimize um, to minimize the negative impact and maximize the benefits as well as stimulate poverty alleviation in Myanmar. And the master plan will be officially uh, presented to the presidents of Myanmar on the 27th of September, which is the, the World Tourism Day in Nepido, and uh, in order to showcase Myanmar's strong cooperation 
cooperation with the UNWTO, as well as to mobilize and manage resources needed to implement the master plan and the responsible tourism policy and community involvement in tourism and also to improve the coordination of tourism sector assistance in Myanmar. These are the six strategic programs as outlined in the tourism master plan. And uh, according to the, to the, the action plans, uh, the opportunities for the potential investors will be to create unique and innovative experience for the tourists and, and uh, to achieve the maximum benefits from tourism development as outlined in the tourism master plan. And, uh, Myanmar has launched a nation branding campaign in World Economic Forum on East Asia recently, which was held in Nipido uh, from 5th to 7th of June. And that was a significant movement of tourism promotional activity for Myanmar as well in order to attract uh, attention of the international visitors and uh, also the potential investors. The tagline of the nation branding campaign is Myanmar, let the journey begin. Uh, can I have a video here now? Conclusion, I'd like to reiterate that Myanmar is back on the mainstream of democratization and the international community embraces Myanmar as a potential partner for the business as well as uh, emerging destination. And in response to the rapid growth of the tourism demand, Myanmar has been taking cautious steps to sustain the development over the long run and work in synergies of tourism stakeholders in making Myanmar as a better place uh, for people to live in and also a better place to visit. And Myanmar is the place to be. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Pio, for your valuable insight. Um, we would now like to move into the Q&A part of our session. Uh, please allow me to start off with a few questions before opening up the floor to the audience. Uh, the first question is for Mr. Florence. Mr. Florence, in addition to being on the board of PATA, you are also an, ex an executive director for Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office, a body that has been set up to promote tourism into the greater Mekong region. Could you please share with us some of the past and present initiatives that you and your office have or are using to promote tourism into the region? Sure. Happily. Um, um, we, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're, we're owned by and funded by the six countries of, of the GMS. Um, we have our seed funding. We have enough uh, sort of operational uh, resources to, to, to operate and to, to have our office here in Bangkok. What we really are doing is forging partnerships, um, both public-private sector partnerships with uh, tour operators, with airlines, with hotels, and so forth um, to promote the region. We're also working with development partners, with governmental aid agencies, and also NGOs uh, more on the development side. So there's a, there's a marketing uh, component to it, and there's also a development uh, component to it as well. Um, we personally, we attend quite a lot of travel events, uh, in fact, conferences like this. Uh, travel fairs, we'll set up booths and go out and promote the Mekong, uh, again, as a single destination, as a, as a region uh, by itself. We, uh, we have our own conference every year called the Mekong Tourism Forum uh, that's convened. It was in uh, this last uh, one in June in, in Guilin, in China. Before that, we had it in Pakse, in, in Lao, PDR, uh, in Chiang Rai as well, the year before. So we, we do this conference in the emerging destinations and a little bit more of the, the secondary places. Um, 
our next meeting, in fact, will be in Sihanoukville uh, in, in Cambodia, and then our next forum will be in, in Myanmar in 2014. So we're doing, um, yeah, a lot of uh, awareness raising, um, in particular working with travel agents and working with the media. Uh, we organize fam trips, we'll try to take people out into the field, uh, often with the support of, of our friends from the airlines and friends with hotels and other people in the private sector. There's a lot of in-kind, um, goodwill sort of teaming up to get people out into the field looking at stuff and basically letting the travel agents see it and try to package tours around the, the, the Mekong brand itself and also in terms of um, having um, more sort of access to seeing things for the media. Um, if, if you build it, they will come. We figure if you take people out to these destinations, um, they're going to write about it. And so uh, a lot of what we do is just trying to push people out. Um, and uh, yeah, basically partnerships. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mason Lawrence. Uh, next question is for Kun Tosapon. Uh, low cost carriers have undoubtedly played a key role in making intra-regional travel much more affordable for the mass which has directly resulted in growth in tourism into the region. As the CEO of the leading low-cost carriers here in Thailand and LVMC, in your view, what more can Air Asia do to promote tourism into the region? So as, as Mason said, we, we actually, uh, as an airline, when we, when we open the new destinations, we work with a lot of the press and also the, uh, the tourism communities. We commute them to, um, you know, let's say we open an a new destination in Mandalay. So we would bring a lot of uh, press, TV programs, tourism program, and bring them to Mandalay and organize a tour. I think we did about, about eight times as a big group, and uh, we would go on a one-to-one -one, uh, kind of, uh, for the whole like two to three months. Many TV programs would go there, and we would give them a uh, budget to go and shoot and in order to promote. And, and once we have done that, when the destination become live, uh, it, it become on, on, the, on, the, on the tourism map, we, we couldn't stop. So we have to go back there time to time and make sure that the awareness is there. So for, uh, as an airline, we have to make sure that we serve the, 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 our passengers, which means, as I mentioned in my presentation, that people who come from around the world, they want to go to new places. Uh, when they come to this part of the world, especially when they land in Bangkok, I am sure 70% um, would go down to the beach. That is a must, okay? Either in Phuket, Krabi, Trang, or wherever. And then, they would, because these people would come between from two weeks to two months. So they would have to go around the country and around this, in, uh, this region. They would come back every year, but they are looking to go for new places. And if we make it uh, uh, accessible at low fare, and make sure that they are aware. Okay, the important is that they are aware. They will travel around the region, and the money will be tapped into this uh, CLMV plus Thailand, and there's 170 million people plus the tourism uh, the tourists that come from other part of the world. So uh, we have done this uh, for the past um, 10 years, and it has been proving that it is it is going well. And also, when we uh, we have to work with the local community as well and make sure that they don't over-exploit the, the market. We have worked with the hotel tourism that uh, when it becomes peak, don't charge too high. You, know, you have to be sustainable as well. And we have a lot of problems or trouble with the transport, land transport, who would charge a lot of money. Uh, and they said, if you do like this, tourists will just go away and it will never, never come back. And uh, they believe us. So, it just uh, working with the local communities, make sure that when we launch a destination, it is also sustainable and make sure that we make uh, it become aware and put it on the map of the uh, tourism map of the, of the Indochina region. So that's what we, that we are doing. And exploring new destinations and if it's um, becoming well known, we have to put in more frequency, make sure that we have enough supply to meet the demand in the market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kunta Sapon. Uh, next question will be for Mr. Pio. Myanmar has been attracting a lot of attention since its political reform in 2011, which has also resulted in a large increase in the number of international visitors into the country. As a representative from Myanmar Tourism Promotion Board, what advice would you like to offer to hospitality businesses and investors looking to do business in Myanmar? Uh, thank you. Yes. Um 
as previously mentioned in my, my presentation, um, Myanmar is now seeking, to, seeking for um, an open trade and investment regime um, towards achieving foreign direct investment and also strategic partnership. And uh, therefore, I would like to urge the potential visitors to take the, ch the opportunity to create uh, unique visitor experiences and, uh, and uh, to responsibly invest in Myanmar. And uh, at the same time, I would like them also take uh, into consideration of a particular need to, to safeguard their social, cultural, cultural and uh, environmental systems in the tourism destinations in Myanmar. According to the, uh, the focus of the Ministry of Tur Hotels and Tourism of Myanmar, we are, ex we are trying to achieve 3 million tourist arrival by 2015. That is in 2015. It means we have to, to, to triple the, the, the capacity of the, the international airlines flying to Myanmar and also uh, to increase the infrastructure of the tourism in Myanmar three times. And there is a big opportunity for the investments. And that will be more because we have 7 million tourists arrival in mind by 2020. Uh, considering that, that uh, growth scenario, there will be a lot of opportunities for the uh, in investors to come into Myanmar. And therefore, I would like to again urge that the, the potential investor should um, create um, excellent and, uh, and uh, very quali quality visitor experience in, uh, in order to, to get the maximum benefit of the tourism development. And we, as Myanmar Tourism Federation and Ministry of Hotels and Tourism, is always ready to help the investors to to scan the environment of Myanmar and also to make uh, surveys and also open up the doors for the investors. And uh, welcome to Myanmar. OK, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Peel. So at this time, we would like to open up the floor to um, any questions from the audience. We probably have time for just maybe one or two questions. Um, if anyone would like to ask a question, please raise your hand, and our staff will bring over a microphone to you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, my name is Stephen Hinch from uh, MBMG Asset Management here in Bangkok. Um, my question is really for Kung Pyong in regards to Myanmar. There's a lot of companies definitely interested in investing in Myanmar, but the biggest concern they have, and it probably applies quite strongly to the tourism industry as well, is the, we'll say the current lack of ease of the financial system, just basic credit card capability, ATM capability, do you see that as one of the priorities for the hotel and tourism um, industry in Myanmar in the near term? Definitely. Um, definitely. Thank you for that uh, question. As a matter of fact, without a proper financial system, the, the, the investments and also the development of the Myanmar cannot be done properly. And the government is very acutely aware of that requirement. However, we are having we have stayed uh, alone for the last 60 years, let us say it like that. So we are not in, in, uh, in par with, with, the, with the neighboring countries yet, but there is um, a room for improvement, of course, and uh, the government has already started to uh, set up the Central Bank of Myanmar 
previously which was under the minist minist Ministry of Finance. Now St Central Bank has been uh, gradually taken away from the Ministry of Finance so that it can be uh, self-sufficient, also can make the decision on its own and uh, report directly to the President. Uh, but the, 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 the obstacle for Myanmar is, first of all, to, to train the employees to be financial, uh, to be able to manage the financial system, and it will take some time. And it is also in part due to the, the sanctions on Myanmar over the last two decades. And uh, currently, the, uh, a country like United States has been in, becoming into good terms with the Myanmar, and uh, we are trying to to clear the, the hindrances, but there are still some obstacles to overcome. And I believe it will take at least another six months to, to get Myanmar ahead and uh, clear the obstacles so that uh, the financial system will be, be firm and set for the investments. And uh, we are expecting at least in three more months, we will be able to allow not only the visitors and, and potential investors to use uh, a proper financial system and credit card systems, also for the Myanmar nationals as well. I hope my answer satisfies your question. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Peel. Um, looks like you know, our time is up, and uh, we would like to just close off you know, the session. Um, well, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you to all the panel speakers today, as well as thank you everyone in the audience, and I hope that you found the session informative and interesting. Uh, our next session will begin shortly, which is the uh, prospect for healthcare in LVMC. Thank you very much, Kaplan Kaplan.